Another thing we can do with the execute SQL task is we can craft a SQL statement and store that statement in a variable and have the execute SQL task execute the contents of the variable. It's very easy. Um, I'll show you a couple of different ways to do this. And sometimes it can actually be required depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, let's kind of get in here. Uh, so in the toolbox, uh, I'll drag an execute SQL task. And let's make a connection. I'll just use an OLEDB to SQL Server 2008, AdventureWorks 2008 database. And here's where we are. So we took a look at using the file connection and the direct input thus far. I think in chapter four we did the file connection. All that is is you point it to where a file is that contains the code. But so I, I now want to show you this variable side right here. Okay, Make the ugliest oval I can. Okay, It's as easy as you think it, it is. This needs to be a string type, so I make a variable my SQL statement, make it a string. And you know, if you got enough room, I guess you could just say select all from uh, I guess we'll do something. Um, I don't want to do editing in SQL code right there, so I will uh, create a statement over here in the management studio that we can execute. So um, I'll begin a transaction and let's populate the add a row to department because it's really small. And we could say um, the name would be a new department and it's in a new group. And I think if I'm not mistaken, those are the only things. So we'll just say name comma group name, and I think I can get away with that. I can. And so, you know, it tentatively added this, and it gave it an auto-generated primary key of 17. Um, I'm going to roll back the transaction because we really want to have that done inside of the execute SQL task, right? So all I'm going to do is copy and paste. Go back over here, uh, paste it right here. Oh, I had an S byte. Thank you. And I can't move off the row until I uh, change that to a numeric. Uh, so string. Okay. Just so that you are familiar with rolling it back. Rolling the transaction back undoes it, right? It didn't actually permanently add it to the database now. There is no longer a row 17 with a new name and a new group, okay? So I undid my change. So back over here, that is now the value of our string, and it's really that simple in the SQL task. I, son of a gun. It did not keep it, so I just say variable, and it says which variable holds the SQL statement that you want to execute. That guy right there. I say OK. And run it. And it's done it behind the scenes. So I was able to have it execute that SQL statement that was stored inside the variable. Now for those of you that don't know your SQL identity columns, uh, when you insert a row that either gets an error or you roll back the row, it will not regenerate that same identity column. It will generate the next value. So we And we call that burning it. So it's burned 17 and it won't automatically assign that one again. We would have to reseed the table for it to do that. Or we could manually put a 17 in there. But that's it. I mean, it, it's real simple. Now, here's the question that I have for you. How often are you going to be storing your SQL statements here in a value? Slim to never, right? That's probably about the right answer. So what we'll usually do is we will cobble together a SQL statement to execute using another task. So we might, this might be a combination of things too. This might be I need to read data from a file name. 
Uh, I need to see what files are in a folder and based on the name of the file I'm going to then pass that in as a where clause to a SQL statement and I'm going to store that information inside of a variable. There could be lots of ways to do this and generally we cobble together the statement with a script task. So create SQL statement. And so we will do that before the execute SQL task runs. And so I'll pick uh, C sharp for this one. And I want to write to my variable. So I want to write to the MySQL statement variable. And by using a, a more structured language here, like a C sharp or a Visual Basic, it's just easier. I have one location whose dedicated purpose is creating this statement. Um, I can also take advantage of string.format which just makes writing statements a lot easier. So, or I could take advantage of String Builder, uh, if, if you are familiar with the String Builder class. In fact, I'll use that now. Um, this is in the system.text namespace. And so I'll just make a new String Builder instance. And the String Builder allows us to uh, do a couple of things, append or append format. And if we choose format, it's like string.format in that we have the tokenized strings. So I could do like append when I want to just say insert db, uh, sorry, human resources dot department um, name group name. So you can see that. Sorry, the, I, I should have changed the size of the fonts, but I didn't. I'll, I'll change that uh, a little bit. Um, I, the reason that I would choose append in this case, I might even choose append line if I cared, is there is nothing that dynamically needs to change about this line at runtime. This line is literal content. Now the next line needs to change at runtime. So I could do something like this, sp.append values, um, and then I could say uh, plus dts.variables uh, department id uh, dot value dot to string, uh, and then I could say comma, bring back in my little guys there. Uh, oh wait, and these needs to be name, I'm sorry. Did I name my variables name and group name? I know I need a department ID. Hold on, let's let's get back out of here. Um, oh, I'm not using those variables, am I? I never mind. Um, I, let's do it like this. I, I had it in my brain. I was kind of crossing this video and the last video where we had several variables. Um, here's what I'll do. Um, var department ID equals five, uh, sorry, these are my implicitly typed variables, you know, it may be easier just to do int because the, maybe more people uh, are familiar with that, um, and then I'd say string name equal um, set in C sharp, and I'll do each one on a separate line just uh, to be easy, set in C sharp, and it's telling me up here that uh, it it's not used, so I haven't provided it. So I'd say name, and I need to put in my little guys here so that SQL does this. You see, this is kind of getting confusing, right? Are you are you getting a little bit like what is he doing? Okay. Uh, SB dot append uh, where department ID equals plus department ID dot to string. And then I want to say DTS dot variables my SQL statement dot value equals SB dot to string. So let's let's talk about how this works. Sorry, let me get that uh, tooltip out of the way. Let's talk about how this works. Looks like I've got a syntax error here. I can see the uh, red squigglies over here. Uh, what is my syntax problem? Oh, I'm not terminating it with 
uh, these here. Okay, and I was missing some closing parens. So let's talk about this because I know not everybody is a .NET person, a C sharp person. Um, so here's what we're doing. We're defining up at the top here. We've got three variables and we're storing our literal content in those variables. In the real world those would probably be SSIS variables and we would just assign the values to the uh, local variables. The string builder class at the end of it it builds one big string uh, and I'll, I'll show you because here's what we can do uh, we'll say we'll use our old system message box dot show uh, sb dot to string that way you can actually see what it does and then I'll come back I just I, I hope it is, this makes sense to everybody what it's doing you see it's putting together the statement based on what we typed in okay uh, and if you wanted it to be formatted a little bit better you could looks like I had an error somewhere too I I don't know I'm focused on this um, but you if you wanted separate lines you could use append line instead of these and when I choose append line let's see uh, let's see if I can find that error message there you could see it just puts each one on a separate line and if you didn't want to do append line you can use the slash n lowercase um, Let's see, got an error message. Um, oh, it inserted because uh, there's a problem with the query. Oh, I thought there'd be a, I thought it was going to give me another error. So my query's wrong. Um, where department ID equal values. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm sitting here writing a where clause for the insert. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you guys, every one of you was sitting there going, what in the world? <sighs> My brain is uh, fried from doing too many of these, I guess. So <laughs> I need to take a break. Um, okay, so you get it. Now, here's, uh, I don't like this. I don't like the concatenation here. This is sloppy to me. And it actually is, is kind of okay because we only have two parameters. But do most of your inserts have only two columns? Man, I've dealt with 275 column inserts. No way I want to do something like this. So there is a better way. So I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to do the sb.append format. And what append format does is you still have your literal content, but you use these placeholders and give me a second to write it out and I'll zoom it in so we have these placeholders here the brackets 0 the brackets 1 so what we're gonna do now is there are now two additional parameters being added to the append format method because we just said this parameter is going to have a value and we've got another parameter that's going to have a value. And so, come down here. I usually, for longer ones, I'll separate the, the statement and then um, this becomes name and group name. And that's how I do my code here. So what this says is that the first parameter after this statement is done goes into here so that maps here right. and then the second parameter goes here so it's a cleaner way to write the code if you have if we had um, you know six more it would simply be a matter of two three right your single statement right here is just easier to write in my opinion I'd just come down here and I'd say five uh, you know whatever values that I wanted it's just cleaner code okay so I'm done with this I've got my SQL statement generated now um, I don't need to populate that anymore I'll leave that in here as a comment uh, but I have assigned the value of the variable to be what my C-sharp code 
generates. And that's it. Now it will execute and it will say set in C sharp. And we actually might have several uh, from previous executions here. Um, no, just the one. And that's it. So don't be shy, don't be afraid in Visual Basic or in C Sharp to use that string builder or string.format. Uh, usually we will work this together with several variables. So we will have variables that or we put in a where clause, variables that make up the values we insert. I did literal content. I simply used the script task down here to create the statement dynamically but in the real world instead of this being literal content it's probably the values of other SSIS variables like a file name or an employee ID and a for each loop so that's generally what you would do